It's not just a martial art, but a way of life. Hello everyone, I'm Tim. Buckle up. Today we're gauging the depths of the captivating world of the Pinankata series. The heart and soul of this martial art, at least for the beginning Wadoryu or Shotokan practitioner. Let's peel back the layers of history going back to 1905 to explore the genesis of the Pinan series. The mastermind behind these forms was none other than Anko Itosu, a significant figure in the development of modern karate. But do I really need to introduce him? Anyway, Itosu, a native of Okinawa, was a renowned martial artist and teacher. His innovative thinking led to the creation of the Pinan series, which he designed as a comprehensive system for teaching the principles of karate. However, the purpose of the Pinan series extended beyond just training the body and mind. Itosu had a greater purpose. He didn't merely create the Pinan series as a fitness regimen or as an introductory course for children, although it certainly served that purpose well. A significant part of Itosu's motivation was to make karate more accessible and acceptable to the Japanese military. At the time, karate was still a relatively localized martial art, confined mostly to Okinawa. By simplifying and systematizing the techniques in the Pinan series, Itosu made karate more teachable and more appealing to the Japanese military officials who valued discipline, structure and efficiency. This move played a significant role in the spread of karate from Okinawa to mainland Japan. Thanks to Itosu's Pinan series, karate was introduced to the Japanese military which in turn helped to popularize the martial art across the country. So the next time you practice a form from the Pinan series, remember the grand vision of Anko Itosu. He didn't just develop a set of physical exercises, he paved the way for the growth and proliferation of karate across Japan and eventually the world. The significance of the Pinan series extends beyond the techniques it teaches. Even its name carries a profound message. Pinan translates to peace and tranquility, reflecting the essence of karate. It's not about instigating fights or showcasing brute strength, but rather about achieving inner peace, stability and equilibrium. When I first embarked on the journey of practicing the Pinan series, it was challenging. The complexity of the movements, the precision required and the coordination needed made the path ahead seem quite daunting. However, as I kept practicing, I began to understand the essence of Pinan, discovering the calm amidst the chaos. This naming was not only philosophically resonant, but also clever marketing on Itosu's part. By choosing a name that emphasized peace and safety, he further enhanced the acceptability of karate in mainstream Japanese society. Itosu understood that to spread karate beyond Okinawa, he needed to present it as a disciplined and safe practice, rather than a dangerous or aggressive martial art. The name Pinan perfectly encapsulated this image. This is also one of the reasons karate means empty hand, but that's a story for another day. Now, let's look into the technical aspects of the Pinan series. It's a journey of progress and advancement. It's like a video game with five levels, each new one just a little more challenging than the last. We'll begin with Pinan Nidan. Now, you might be wondering, Tim, isn't Nidan supposed to mean second? Yes! In Wadoryu and in the world of karate numbers, Nidan does indeed signify second. However, in a unique twist, Pina Nidan is taught first in this style. It's a bit unusual, but it works. Pina Nidan introduces us to some basic techniques like Gedan Barai, or the down block. It's a foundational move that offers protection and sets up your next attack. This kata might be a starting point, but it's no walk in the park. It's akin to learning to crawl, demanding coordination of hands, feet, body, and mind. In Pina Nidan, we also encounter the open hand thrust, or Nukite, an incredibly versatile technique. It's not just about attacking, it's about redirecting energy, taking control and also setting up your next move. Next up is Pinan Shodan. Now this is where we begin to move with a bit more confidence, building upon the techniques we've learned. In Pinan Shodan, we learn the knife hand block or Shuto Uke. It's more than a block, it's a balance of defense and style. The Shuto Uke is a lesson in balance, control and precision. And the satisfaction of executing a perfect Shuto Uke is unmatched. But 
Pinan Shodan isn't just about flashy moves, it's about building a strong foundation, understanding the basics and beginning to adapt them in unique ways. It's a process similar to learning to play a musical instrument. Now our journey continues with Pinan Sandan. Now this is where we start to see a significant increase in complexity. In Pinan Sandan we encounter a variety of stances like Senkutsu Dachi, Shiko Dachi and Ekowashi Dachi, but much much more. Each stance serves a different purpose and offers unique opportunities for defense and attack. The elbow strike, or Ampi Uchi, might appear straightforward, but it carries much more than meets the eye. It's about understanding your opponent's attack and using it to your advantage. Our exploration of the Pinan series now takes us to Pinan Yondan. This is where our skills start to be tested in new ways. In Pinan Yondan, we encounter augmented techniques, morote, or with two hands. They're not just blocks, they're strategic moves that set up counterattacks. These techniques teach us about the harmony of our own movements and understanding our opponent's energy. Finally, we reach Pinan Godan. This is where we literally take our skills to new heights. Pinan Godan introduces us to advanced techniques like the jump and turn. It's about agility, precision and quick thinking. It's a technique that requires focus, strategy and courage. Remember, every kata is a part of your karate journey. From Pinan Nidan to Pinan Godan, each step offers new challenges and opportunities for your growth. So whether you're just beginning with Pinan Nidan or advancing with Pinan Godan, remember to enjoy your journey and keep pushing forward. Now let me get real with you for a sec. I've been doing karate for years. And it has transformed me, not into a ninja turtle or kung fu panda, but into a more balanced, focused and peaceful person. The Pinan Kala series has been my Yoda, teaching me not just how to fight, but how to live. And that concludes our exploration of the Pinan Kala series. It's much more than a sequence of techniques. It's a transformative journey towards inner harmony and balance. And the beauty of this journey is that it grows richer and more fulfilling the more you traverse it. So continue to practice, continue to uncover new layers, and continue to immerse yourself in the captivating discipline that is karate. It's not just a martial art, but a way of life. And as you keep exploring, you'll find it's a path that continually rewards your dedication and commitment. If you like what you see here and you want to see more, click right here to see more. For now, let me wish you a wonderful day, and as always, thanks for watching.